thank you so much for joining us and you're most welcome to take us through right now. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. We are good. Good morning. Good morning to you. We can see your your slides. Mm Uh. So, so just like I've said, I've been I'm privileged to be here this morning to discuss diabetes, and. Uh, So essentially, just to, 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 as a starter, it is important for us to note that uh, diabetes is a disease that can be controlled. So to give everybody hope and, uh, and, 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 and not to, 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 to discourage anyone, diabetes is a disease which can be controlled. And just like I've said, I've been looking after patients with diabetes over the past 20 or so years. And uh, I'm an endocrinologist working at Makera University and uh, Mulago Hospital. So this morning we are going to 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 to, to discuss really the details about diabetes. But essentially, before we dig into the depth of diabetes and uh, everything around diabetes. I would request everyone to, if somebody has got any myths that they have heard about diabetes, any misconceptions about diabetes uh, or their expectation, is it possible for them to write them down into the chat so that as we start, we, we, we can always clear those myths about diabetes. Yes, uh, please, uh, seniors and caregivers, you can put all your myths and expectations in the chat room. We shall take note of them. Thank you. So, so at the end of the day, we should be very comfortable about knowing what diabetes mellitus is, and then uh, causes of diabetes mellitus, and then uh, symptoms, how to tell that somebody has got diabetes either through symptoms or through the laboratory worker because we can use the two. And then at the end of the day, we shall try to see if somebody has got diabetes, how can we help that person? Or if somebody doesn't have diabetes, how can we help them uh, not to have, not to get the disease? So Christina, are there any, any, any that have come through in the chat? Any, any, any myths and expectations so that those we can uh, 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 at present, we have one or you which says like young people can't, it. young people can't get the disease and it is, is it due to bewitching? Diabetes is a result of heavy weight. Those are the three I've noted. Uh, are we having some issues with audio? 
Tina, can you try and check on that? The audio is working and clear. I think people who can't hear should get out and try and get in again. Okay. Diabetes cannot eat, a diabetic cannot eat katogo. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I think what we may do, let me go along and if somebody has anything along the way, I would prefer that uh, today we, we sort of keep it back and forth so that uh, we, 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 we are comfortable at every stage of the, the discussion. I would prefer to, to, to engage with, uh, with, with the audience more. Uh, so Christina, you're going to support me in that as, as, as any suggestions come through the, the box. You can always look at that as we go along. Okay. Yes, okay, and so maybe at this juncture we can add on. Uh, okay. uh, is there a herbal, is there a herbal medicine other than tablets or insulin? Uh, avoid sugar means I will not get diabetes. Okay. A comment uh, on reversal, please. I think this means uh, can can we can it be reversed or something like that? Wonderful. Okay. So I think uh, 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 as I, as we go along, I'm going to try and. And, and swim through the areas that uh, members have raised. And uh, mm -hmm. if any come up, we shall also throw more light on those. So for starters, we ask ourselves, what is diabetes mellitus? I'm sure you've had so many discussions uh, out there about, uh, about diabetes mellitus. And, uh, and, 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 and today we are going to try and really make it as simple as possible so that we can better understand it. Now, normally in the body, we have, the body has got to survive. And the different systems that we have in the body, the nervous system, the muscles, the excretory system, the reproductive system, basically all the systems in the body, they work towards helping uh, the body achieve its goals of surviving. The body has got to survive. And the different systems do different functions so that we are able to live. It is just like in a factory. We have the water supply, the electricity supply, the drainage systems, all those coming together to ensure that a factory is functioning. The same thing happens in the body. However, the body to do that, it needs a, a very important component for it to run. And essentially that is glucose. Glucose gives us the firepower, the energy to run this body properly. However, however, at this point, let me uh, put an extra emphasis on this, that this energy is required within a certain limit. Should we give the body beyond the required amounts, the body goes into dysfunction. That's why normally the body was designed uh, to be able to handle this glucose, to keep it within required levels so that it doesn't cause havoc to the body. It is just like a, a factory. If you give a factory too much electricity at very high voltages, you're going to get the bulbs blowing up. You're going to get the machines malfunctioning. You're going to get disorders here and there within the factory. So similarly in the body, once we don't control this glucose, it is going to cause havoc all over the place. So what exactly happens is that uh, within the body, we have a native system which was designed to clearly control this glucose so that it does not go beyond the desired levels. So essentially when we eat food, we get a rise in this glucose because this glucose we get entirely from the food we eat. And uh, the body produces a substance called insulin. And that insulin essentially is, it is there to help us 
capitalize on that glucose so that either that is utilized or it is stored within the body. So you can see within that diagram, we have our pancreas and the pancreas is the one that mainly produces that insulin and the insulin goes to the tissues and helps this glucose to be used, the energy to be used. Now, I'm sure you have heard people say that somebody has got type one diabetes. When somebody has type one diabetes, all it means is that this person is not able to produce your insulin. You can see within the pancreas, the pancreas is not producing that important chemical to regulate the insulin, rather regulate the glucose. So type one, essentially we are not producing any insulin from the pancreas. And there are so many factors as we shall see that can cause that. And then on the other side, we have the biggest uh, portion of diabetes, which is type two diabetes. As patients age, and uh, as patients uh, put on weight, and essentially majority of patients who have good diabetes will have type two. And here, all that is happening is that we have our pancreas producing our insulin, but for some reason, for some reason, that insulin is not working well at, at, at the receptors, uh, at, within the receptors. So, so essentially what is happening here we have lots and lots and lots of insulin, but there is a problem at the tissues either, majorly because of the fats. The fats are blocking our receptor where the insulin is supposed to work. And this leads to an increase in the glucose level, but also an increase in the glucose level. I'm sure you've heard about uh, where uh, some colleagues have discussed issues to do with high insulin levels in the blood, what we call hyperinsulinemia. So the body thinks that, hey, I think my insulin is not working well. So it ends up producing even more insulin. And uh, when somebody gets an increase in insulin levels in the blood, it is like the initial step as they are developing diabetes. So type two, insulin is produced, that's not working well. And we're going to discuss many factors that can lead to that. So essentially, as we, we have seen, our core problem within diabetes is insulin. Either we are not producing it, or we are producing it, but it is not working. Something has happened at our receptors. Now, let us go deeper and see what exactly causes uh, these insulin issues. What, what can affect our insulin that either we're not producing it or it is not working well? And if that happens, what are the repercussions out of all this? So among them, the causes, number one, high blood pressure. If somebody has got high blood pressure, the pressure goes and affects the insulin sites, the insulin product production. So whenever you have high blood pressure, think of diabetes because hypertension and diabetes are two twins. And I'm glad to know that you discussed uh, something to do with hypertension earlier. And then number two, the age. Age is a critical factor that contributes to diabetes as well. Why age? is that as somebody ages, the different tissues start malfunctioning. And once that happens, then our insulin is not going to work well at the receptors. Sedentary life, you know, is, 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 is no longer jogging. They want to change the channel on the TV. They are on the city. They use the remote control. They are not doing any physical activity. Then, what you're doing is that you are not stimulating the muscles to receive the insulin. So your insulin is not going to work well. Then if there is any disease that attacks the pancreas, it could be a cancer. 
it could be uh, 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 that there are some worms, some viruses. Uh, recently, we had COVID. COVID would attack the pancreas because it could create inflammation all over the body. So if we have any disease that hits the pancreas, that means you're not going to have your insulin. Then we have genetic predisposition. I'm sure you've seen families where everybody is diabetic. The majority of the people are diabetic. So we have that inbuilt genetic predisposition. So if you have a relative who has got diabetes, then you need to take extra care. And we think this could be because there could be an inherent genetic malfunction, either in the production of the insulin or in the action of the ins insulin within the tissues. Then the diet. Diet is one of the most important factors leading to diabetes. And when I talk about the diet, unhealthy foods, we are talking about refined foods. We are talking about things like the sodas. We are talking about the fast foods. We are talking about uh, excessive use of alcohol. We are talking about smoking. We are talking about people eating all these fatty foods, the chocolates, the sweets, the biscuits. Now, all those, what they do is that they go and bombard the body with excessive glucose. Now, once you have excessive glucose, this glucose again affects the action of your insulin by altering the insulin receptors. Of course, if you are taking in unhealthy foods, eventually you're going to end up with obesity and obesity certainly will worsen uh, the situation within uh, the tissues in terms of action of our insulin. Furthermore, there's a factor which is normally not discussed, the stress. If somebody is stressed as we age, Stress may come in either because of social factors, financial, different factors. These are going to affect the way our body responds to glucose. Stress for starters alone will cause an increase in the glucose amounts in the body. But also it will predispose you to hypertension and also predispose you to malfunctioning of the, 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 the different uh, glucose control mechanisms. Then the medicines. We have patients or people who, for some reason, are taking other medicines which may affect the way insulin works. I'll give you an example. If somebody is taking prednisolone, if somebody is taking dexamethasone, if somebody is taking any of those drugs that are going to antagonize insulin, then you'll end up with diabetes. If I've got asthma, and they give me prednisolone, hydrocortisone, these are steroids. They, they, they work in the body in such a way that they increase the glucose levels, but also they antagonize insulin. Recently, uh, as we are treating patients for COVID, we are giving them high doses of dexamethasone. So as we were controlling the COVID, on the other hand, we are predisposing these patients to, to diabetes mellitus. And we have seen many come up with, uh, with, uh, with diabetes. But the good news is that most of these conditions, especially secondary to medicines, as a side effect of the medicines, it's, uh, they usually transient. And over time, these uh, become uh, controlled. It is really a short time, and then it, it, it goes away. So what happens if, uh, somebody has been having uh, an issue of, uh, of diabetes, uh, rather an, an issue about an increase in the glucose levels in the blood. So what exactly happens uh, in the body? So number one, if our body is no longer controlling the glucose well, we are going to end up with a rise in glucose levels in the body. Now what the body does, it does not lose good things. It doesn't, totally. So what it does, it, 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 it sort of like uh, opens up the stores. So it converts this glucose to fats, and then it is stored in the different tissue. Now, once you have fat, then the cascade of problems start. You end up gaining weight, the blood vessels become narrow, and this sugar becomes toxic to the body. And it majorly does that through damage to the blood vessels. As you can see in that diagram, 
uh, the blood vessels start narrowing as they get damaged. And eventually our systems all over the body go into a process what we call the aging. So the tissues age and then they start malfunctioning as we are going to see uh, briefly. So, so subsequently what happens in the body is that uh, we have all body tissues being affected uh, once somebody has got diabetes. No body tissue is spared. Because remember, as we said, diabetes is going to affect the blood vessel. And once the blood vessel is damaged, then the brain and the nerves are going to be affected. The eyes are going to be affected. The kidneys are going to be affected. The heart is going to be affected. The liver, the skin, the limbs, the muscles, the intestines, the blood and the immune system. So essentially, every part of the body is essentially damaged and uh, they start malfunctioning. And uh, that's why you see that diabetes is, is, a, is a disease that we have got to work around the clock to prevent because it virtually hits every body part. And uh, we are going to see exactly uh, what happens if, if any of these are affected. At this, at this point, uh, are there any, any, any other issues that have come up, uh, Christina? About, uh, about anything that uh, at this point that may need a clarification? Because somebody asked about uh, uh, if somebody avoids sugar, uh, whether it can, it can, it can, it can uh, uh, prevent diabetes. No doubt, as we are going to see. Yes, doctor, there are some, and uh, I'm going to ask Dr. Philippa to just point them out quickly. Okay. Okay, uh, one other question that has come up is whether you can be on insulin and oral hypoglycemics at the same time, and if so, when? Uh, another issue is about whether you can reverse prediabetes, and I think you said you'll talk about that later. Uh, someone has asked about if I have a family history of diabetes, her dad has diabetes, her mom does not, but is hypertensive. Uh, how can she avoid get, he or she avoid getting diabetes? Uh, how do I avoid foods and or cut out foods? Sorry, do I have to avoid foods or cut out foods? Uh, what about supplements and lifestyle and whether you support intermittent fasting? Um, there's also a question about the keto diet, its usefulness to control diabetes and if it is a safe lifestyle. Yes, that's what we have so far. Back okay, to you, the keto diet we shall discuss, the food we shall discuss and the supplements. Now the family history of diabetes and hypertension. We conducted different studies within Makerere and uh, again, it came out through that study to support the evidence that whenever you have a relative, uh, a, a first degree relative who has got uh, diabetes or hypertension, your risk for diabetes goes higher more than a person who does not have a relative with hypertension or diabetes. So you become a very important candidate to prevent uh, diabetes, as we are going to see in subsequent slides, how we are going uh, to avoid uh, diabetes. Reversal we shall discuss, insulin hypoglycemics we shall discuss. Somebody had asked about uh, uh, the, 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 the sugar and diabetes. Now, in terms of etiology. We saw earlier that uh, once we have uh, the unhealthy food stuffs, the unhealthy food, then we predispose our body to, to diabetes uh, mellitus, the unhealthy foods. So if you avoid sugar, all you're doing is that you are reducing the strain you're putting on the system. Remember we said that one of the initial, the core problem is with insulin. If you take too much glucose, you are causing a, a stimulation of the body to produce insulin. So by cutting back on the volume of food or cutting back on the glucose, then you are cutting back on insulin production, which rests your pancreas 
and uh, thus avoiding uh, diabetes. So very important as we are going to see further in the discussion that uh, avoiding sugars is a very important aspect uh, uh, for us uh, to incorporate as we try to prevent and treat uh, diabetes. We now move into detection. How are we going to detect? How are we able to tell that oh, I should be having diabetes? Oh, uh, there, there, there could be something wrong with diabetes. Uh, uh, oh, I, I, I should be quickly going to a doctor to, to, to look at this. So what do members think? Uh, any suggestions how we can quickly detect uh, diabetes mellitus? Uh, members, please put in the chat room any suggestions. Detection of diabetes. So if, if you are there, how, how, how will you tell that... Uh, you have got diabetes. I've been trying out a whole food approach to managing my DM, i.e. whole food and legumes, including oats. Is there science to support this? Someone says they will feel fatigue. The fasting sugar frequent fast, passing urine excessively, regular check checkups on annual basis, especially when you are 40 plus, frequent passing out of urine, excessive fast, that should Wonderful. be fast, yeah. Wonderful, now all those factors are very, very important. But as a starting point, a very important starting point is that diabetes mellitus is a silent disease. So for starters, we have got to do regular checks, even if you don't feel anything. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to do regular checks for diabetes mellitus because it is silent. It is a silent disease. It won't be like malaria or somebody who has got pneumonia or somebody has got diarrhea or somebody has got any of the other diseases. Diabetes mellitus for the bigger part is very silent. Mm. Actually, 50% of patients who have got a problem with their glucose, they won't exhibit any symptoms. So regular checkups, very important. And then the other symptoms are the colleagues have put up the fatigue, the thirst, increased urination, as we're going to see. Uh, as, as, as we move. Now, these are the key symptoms that somebody will exhibit once we have our glucose starting to misbehave. They will always feel hungry. If you go into that state where you cannot wait for one, two, three hours, uh, uh, and when the hunger sets in, you feel like, hey, I have to eat right now, then you get to know that something is wrong with the glucose system in the body. If you have high blood pressure, you have to check diabetes, just like we said, these two diseases are twins. They move one in front of the other all together at the same time. If you have any malfunction in the system, be it the sexual disorder, be it the eyes, be it the heart, be it any, just like you saw, diabetes can affect any of the systems. So if you have a malfunction within any of the systems, please quickly, uh, uh, seek out to see how your sugars are behaving. Thirsty, just like one of the, the, the colleagues noted out, if somebody is feeling thirsty all the time, if you get burning in the feet, in the hands, that is a sign that the nerves are being damaged by diabetes. If you're passing too much urine, one of the colleagues again mentioned that if you're passing too much urine, either in terms of volume or in terms of frequency, you're over waking up at night, over waking up at night. But I should also emphasize at, this, emphasize at this point that diabetes causes an increase in UTIs. So whenever you have problem pain on urinating, you're feeling uncomfortable urinating, look into the sugar. And then weight gain. If you see you're either 
gaining weight or losing weight, there is a problem with your glucose. And uh, it should be checked out very quickly. If you have an issue with uh, dizziness, blindness, those are signs that the sugars are affecting your brain and, and the eye system. So you should be having it uh, checked out. And then frequent infections, including candida. Once you have all those, any of those, then uh, it is a quick sign that, that your sugar should be quickly uh, checked out. But just like I, like I said, we may not have any of these symptoms, yet the sugar is high within the body. So regular checkups, regular checkups are to try and catch the diabetes early. Uh, someone, uh, Dr. Edrissa, someone pointed out that wounds not healing faster. Do you have a comment on that? Very, very, very important. Very important. Remember, we said that if we have any malfunctioning within any of the systems, if we have, for example, uh, the skin, we have frequent infections of the skin, then we are worried about diabetes. If we have uh, any malfunctioning of any system, be it the brain, you may see that you're slowing down in terms of how you, you put things together, your concentration is going down, or you're having these frequent infections with the skin, with candida. So very true. Once we have anything, uh, non-healing wounds, it is a sign that we are having poor blood supply and also the sugars are high and, uh, and, and these bugs, because the bugs feed on glucose. So once your glucose levels are high, the bugs are not going to go away. They're going to be in your eyes, in the skin, in the UTIs, in the, the intestines, in the... In the, in, the, in the different uh, systems, but particularly the skin, the wounds will not be healing. And that's why we have to quickly address the issue about the wounds because we, some of these patients end up with amputation, which we will not want. Laboratory detection. Having seen any of the symptoms that we have, then we have quickly have got to go and check within the lab. Okay, just like we said that diabetes, most of the time it's silent, we should regularly go and check our blood sugar. Whether you have go to, gone to hospital for any other condition, you may have taken a child, have your, your doctor check your glucose. You have gone for, for, for maybe a procedure, a tooth extraction, have your sugar uh, checked. You've gone for whatever reason uh, that, that has taken you to hospital, or maybe you've just gone to, to say hello to, 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 to Dr. Mutevi, you can as well say, hey, doctor, uh, why don't you check my glucose? It takes five seconds, one minute max to have your, your, your sugar checked and it can save you a lot. Because if it is, early, if it is detected early, it is going to, 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 to be treated early, as we shall say, and we can actually reverse. And then, we, if you have got diabetes, if you've got diabetes, or if you are having an issue with aging, you should always have your systems evaluated. Because we saw diabetes affects the different systems. So once you have diabetes, have your systems uh, evaluated. But also age affects our different systems. So even without diabetes, we should be into a habit of regularly checking our systems. At least the key major systems, the, 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 the heart, the kidney, the liver, the key important organs to see that they are functioning well. And for men, of course, we don't forget the prostate. And uh, really, this is uh, like a, a quick guide on, 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 on how you can quickly tell that I, I have diabetes. And uh, you can see if you have a fasting blood sugar beyond 126, if you have HbA1c, because we, we use three main parameters to to really tell that somebody has got a diabetes, either fasting blood sugar or a test called HbA1c, or we can do what we call an oral glucose tolerance test. Now, if you use the fasting blood sugar, you shouldn't go above 126. If you use the HbA1c, you shouldn't go above 6.5. And if you use the oral glucose tolerance test, you shouldn't go above 200. So those are the different uh, parameters. But remember, if you use a fasting and HbA1c, you, you may want to, to maybe do it on two different occasions, or at least use the fasting and the HbA1c 
but by and large, the oral glucose tolerance test is the gold standard. This is one of the most important slides because it brings out a very important aspect of pre-diabetes. You can see there's a, there are columns. There's a first column, there's a second column, and the third column. And then on the sides, we have either somebody being diabetic or pre-diabetes or normal. So you can either use within the first column, the A1C, uh, at times what we call the HDA1C, just like we are seeing, to tell us whether we are diabetic or pre-diabetic or normal. And then we can use the fasting sugar as well, again, to categorize us, or the glucose tolerance test, again, to categorize us. But the important group is that group in the middle, the pre-diabetes. Most of, most of our colleagues, when you go to hospital and they just run a fasting blood sugar, it may turn out to be normal. Yet this patient may be having pre-diabetes. And it is important for us to note that even within the pre-diabetes stage, you are having damage within the different body tissues. So it is important once in a while for you to do, in addition to the fasting sugar, to either do the A1C or better still to do the glucose tolerance test. Uh, some, some, maybe like a week ago, I got a, 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 a colleague of mine who was having features, was having wounds, repeated wounds, was having burning sensation in the feet, and doctors had declared this colleague of mine as non diabetic because they were only running fasting blood sugars alone. Now, what I did, because the symptomatology was clear to diabetes, I did what we call the glucose tolerance test. So this patient comes in in the morning without eating anything. We do the fasting sugar. And then we tell them to drink a solution which has got 75 grams of glucose. And then we test the sugar every 30 minutes for two hours. So we'll do at 30, one hour, one hour and a half, two hours. And then we'll look at the readings and we'll follow the, the last column. You can see if you're above 200, diabetic. 140 to 199, that's pre-diabetes. Less than 140, that's normal. And this colleague of ours, when we tested the sugars as we went along, the sugars went as high as 160, 170, and then 205. Meaning this patient actually was diabetic, but the body was still in the struggling state. So in that state, what we do, we challenge the body by giving it glucose. And we say, fine, let us see how you behave. We give it glucose and then we test. And we are testing the handling capacity of the body. And indeed, this patient will diagnose them to have diabetes by doing the glucose tolerance test. So once in a while, it will be nice to do a glucose tolerance test because there are many, many patients that we, that we miss by doing these other uh, prior tests which are, I would say, uh, they are good tests. Doctor, just a quick one to supplement what you are saying. Uh, someone wants to know what interval should be, should, should be between the two uh, occasions of, for confirming the, the test, the, the diabetes. I guess they are, they've okay. taken maybe a patient to the lab and they want to know when they should do that test, the second test to confirm. Okay, I, ideally we, we tell them to use three months. If you have done the initial test and you see that this test is a little bit abnormal, please run another test after like three months. Uh, however, there's no harm in, in, in just doing a follow-up before the three months, by the, by the general guidelines, uh, they tell you three months. However, our patients uh, don't want to go to hospital. They are they rarely get checkups. So normally in my facility, once I get somebody who has got an abnormal reading, I normally tell them to come back after a month. I, I sort of like keep them into the loop. So I give them a shorter period, but three months is, is, is okay as well. So treatment and prevention of diabetes visitors. How are we going to, to treat? Do members have an idea what are the key, key, key components 
that we can consider uh, as, 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 as we, we try and treat and prevent diabetes? Okay, let's put up our ideas in the box, please. Diet and exercise. Okay. Education. Education on uh... monitor okay. diet. There's been a lot on diet. Okay. Uh, watch what you eat. Okay. Please, if anyone is uh, comfortable with Luganda, please, all the caretakers, you can write in Luganda. We even put up your hand and we hear what you, you experience out there at home. The, the, the members the members who this who 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 talked about a diet uh, do they have any 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 specifics about the diet any issues any concerns any challenges they have had with the diet so that we can air those as, as we discuss the the, 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 the the diet there was a question on keto diet and then there is also a question on what food should one what what food do, would you recommend? Okay. And of course, somebody asked about the supplements. Yes. And there's one up after post-COVID. Do you have any experiences with uh, any figures of people who have developed uh, diabetes post-COVID treatment? There's also a question okay. in, on intermittent fasting, whether it's useful. Okay. Okay, wonderful. We shall have, we shall try to go through those as we go along. Now, treatment and prevention of diabetes. Now, it's important for us uh, to to highlight the important aspect. What are our goals? Now, we should know that as we tell people about diet, or as we use diet in terms of our control or prevention, number one we should get the required nutrients mm. because we get nutrients from all the different foodstuffs. So we should get the required nutrients for this body, just like uh, we discussed for the systems to run properly. Number two, we have got to minimize complications. We don't want somebody to develop complications because if you have diabetes and you start developing complications, then it becomes very expensive and then the monetary becomes more aggressive so we want to minimize these complications. Number three, we need to lead a normal life. A patient with diabetes should lead a normal, enjoyable life. More still if they have age uh, in there. And then two important aspects is that HbA1c target should be around seven. And of course that can be modified back and forth, but on average seven is good enough to go. Then a the blood sugar should be kept between five and nine, and these are within millimoles. For those of uh, my colleagues who use uh, 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 milligrams per deciliter, we want to keep it between a figure of around 100 to around 170. So you want to keep it within that bracket. Okay, so what are the different modalities that are important as, as, as we prevent diabetes or control diabetes? One is the diet we are going to look at what is our input into that body very critically, and we're going to discuss this in detail. Number two, the exercises. And number three, the weight control. Remember, weight is like an indicator. It tells you how well you're doing with exercises and diet. It is really like, a, like, like something that tells you, hey, I think you're on the right track. And then we shall discuss the medicines, stress control, and social support. Now, those are the different five important aspects that we have got to look at moving forward in terms of uh, prevention and treatment. So if we go into that proper, remember the body requires two important nutrients. We have the macronutrients, 
These are the big nutrients. And these are got from carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, mainly. And it is important for us to note that when you eat fats and proteins, these will give you the calories you want, but they will minimally affect your sugar. The carbohydrates on the other side, you'll get the calories, but the sugars will go up. Now, this is a very important point that the, the people who advocate for keto diet use, as we are going to discuss further. The number two is we need the micronutrients. We need other small nutrients. The body requires them in small amounts, but if they're not there, they can cause problems. Vitamin B, vitamin C, majority the vitamins are under micro, zinc, magnesium, and the good news is majority of these can be got from our vegetables. So the vegetables are going to be very important in terms of giving you the micronutrients, and a little bit from the fruits. These are uh, going to be got from those two different aspects. So as, a, as, as we discussed that, it's important for us to consider the macro and the micro. Alcohol, smoking, and no-go areas for patients with diabetes. If you want to lead a healthy life, if you have diabetes, you want to run away from smoking. Previously, uh, there were studies which had been done and showed that Actually, alcohol has got a benefit within the body. Uh, however, WHO recently came up with a paper that uh, advises that uh, the lower the amount of alcohol you take, the better for you. If I'm taking four bottles of alcohol, I'm better than a person who is taking three. And the one taking three is better than the one of taking two. The one of two is better than one taking, uh, sorry, the one taking four bottles is worse than the one taking three. The one taking three is worse than the one taking two. The one taking two is worse than the one taking one. And if I'm not taking any, I'm better than any of, 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 of the above categories. So the lower, the better. Now, as we go into diet, we need to plan what we are going to eat, putting into consideration the macro and the micro. However, we have to consider certain things. What are our goals? What do we want from this diet? Uh, and, 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 and at this point, under goals, we have certain patients who may come and they're they are wasted. So your goal there is to put on some weight. So you look into your foods and you say, which food is going to give me weight? It is the proteins. Please consider the test. We, are, we said we are living a normal life. Do not for somebody to take certain vegetables that, that are not tested to them. We have a variety. There's buga, there's nakati, there's carrot, there's cucumber, there is, you know, go for the one that is going to give you the test so that you enjoy the meal. Do not take them raw if you don't want. Boil them, okay? Put in a little bit, a little bit of oil if you want it to even improve the test. And then the lifestyle. If I'm, a, if, I'm, if, if I'm a person who, who has got minimal activity, then I could cut back on my food intake. If I'm a person who is very active, I'm driving, I, I'm, 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 you know, then my, style, my lifestyle is different from a person who is seated. Like a doctor, at most of the time I'm seated. Uh, in, in my consultation, I'm seated down. So my lifestyle is different from a person who maybe does marketing and they have to move around and meeting people. So their movement may be more than mine. So you have to consider also the lifestyle, the activities, the medicines. You have to consider what is this person taking? What about the other illnesses this person is taking, is having? So we have to look into this whole body in totality. We should ensure that we are balanced and we enjoy the life as, as, as much as we can, but minimizing our rising, the glucose. So as we plan our meal, we have three major methods we can use. One is the plate method, the portion sizes, and then the carbohydrate counting. Majorly today, today we are going to discuss the plate and the pro, uh, proportion sizing. So number one, the plate method. 
as you can see on, 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 on our right, uh, there is that beautiful plate which is around nine inches. You can see our beautiful vegetables are constituting almost 50% of that plate, 50%. So if you want to prevent diabetes, go for the vegetables. The vegetables are going to give you the macronutrients, micro the small nutrients. They are going to give you that fiber that you require because the fiber controls the rate of absorption of glucose into the body. The vegetables have that fiber. So the glucose will go into the body slowly. So you don't challenge the, the body quickly. And then the vegetables still, they help sort of like uh, 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 help the different system work better and prevent things like hypertension and prevent uh, many other diseases. Studies have shown that vegetables are good to prevent cancers. They prevent hypertension. They're good in terms of controlling your diabetes. And they're also bulk formers because when you eat a dish like this, your stomach will feel empty. But once you put in the vegetables, they'll give you that bulk. And then the proteins, you can see the proteins are constituting 25% and then the carbohydrates 25%. So that is the plate method. So somebody had uh, asked, I think earlier about, uh, about uh, something to do with the diet. So, 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 so the person who asks about the supplements, what the people capitalize on, keto diet is coming. So the people who, who somebody asks about the, 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 the supplements, what these people do, they capitalize on the vegetables and then they just form supplements for you. I told you the body requires micronutrients. So most of the supplements have got micronutrients. And uh, I won't say that the supplements are bad, but if you can take the vegetables in the state they are, they are better than the supplements because you're, when they give, give you a supplement, you're missing out on the fiber. Remember, it is, 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 it's, it's refined. So you're missing out on the fiber. And uh, even better still, you're missing out on the bulk function of the vegetables. However, if a person cannot eat, their food intake is low and you need these micronutrients, you can throw in a little bit of the supplements. But by and large, if you can go to Kalerwe, you can go to any market, buy our carrots, buy our broccoli, cauliflower, the cucumbers, the buga, nakati, intula, eggplant, uh, green pepper, yellow pepper, red pepper, all those are beautiful uh, things that you want to take in their natural state because of the extra benefits that uh, we, have, uh, we have looked at. Method two, uh, if you're not able to use the initial, the first method, at times some people are caught in a situation where they, 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 they want to use uh, something uh, that is uh, more, so we say the vegetables, the vegetables you can use like a fist. Okay, you can see on the right upper corner, you have a fist uh, that is uh, constituting your vegetables and then your carbohydrates is like a scooped uh, 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 handful. It is on the right, uh, lower, uh, right, no, left, left lower. But that's the scooped handful. And then the proteins is really like a pump food. And then a little bit of the, 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 the oils there, they, they, of course, the, the nuts and, and things like that. Somebody has asked, asked about the legumes. The legumes by and large would cross cut, but majorly they are, I, I, I take them within the vegetable category. And legumes are wonderful. Just, so, just like we have discussed uh, the benefits that they will give you. So if you consume lots of those, you're going to, 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 to be at a good stand to prevent or treat uh, diabetes. So Katogo is, Katogo of uh, Somebody had asked about Katogo. If I, if I can flash back onto this one, somebody had asked about Katogo. Now Katogo, we saw here that it should constitute 25% of your plate. Okay. Now, uh, maybe to throw some more light for you, and uh, this is what I do for my patients in regards at this point about the meal. My patients, I tell them that the vegetables, eat them as much as you can. Eat plenty, even if you eat a full dish, the vegetables, the legumes, the, the different vegetables. The carbohydrates, the carbohydrates are majorly the foods that we eat the sweet potato, the Irish potato, the rice, the kosho, 
the porridge, the the the, the, the winter bix, the, the cornflakes, the, the the oats. Now all those I put them the, the, the bread, the chapatis. I put them into the category of carbohydrates. They go into the food. Now I tell my patients, I normally give them a weighing scale, and I tell them do not go beyond three hundred grams of carbohydrates. That is also a, a quick arbitrary figure, and my of patients who have so katogo if you're going to take katogo either use the 25 percent of your plate but that can be a little bit subjective but better still keep that percent the, the grommage below 300 grams okay doctor i don't know how comfortable people are with 300 grams is this cooked? Is this uh, raw? Uh, can we use like sites to, to estimate that? What will it be? If, it, if I'm using oh, uh, my wife preparing food, what, what, what mm -hmm. portion is equal to like 300 grams? We now, normally what I do, I, uh, by and large at my facility, my patients, I give them a, a simple weighing scale that can measure grams. And uh, we actually do measure the actual grams and we measure only cooked food. Okay. So after cooking your food, you put your plate on the scale and then put on your food. And then your food uh, should weigh less than 300 grams. And this is done three times a day. So in terms of carbohydrates in a day, you're not going to take beyond a 900 grams maximum. If the sugars are not doing well, we push that figure even lower. I have patients who have done 150 grams in the morning, 150 at lunch, 150 at supper, and they do very well. Once you keep dropping down the, 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 the carbohydrate intake, then you most of the time the glucose drops. So, but we doctor, mm. uh, if I put a chitole chemere, equal to mm -hmm. a feast, uh, you know, a feast, is that anything like to go by 300 or is it too much? Exactly, that is, a, that is a, exactly what happens because remember we said a feast is equivalent to the amount of uh, carbohydrates somebody should take. Remember, remember that the that, that, that portion sizing? Yes. We use the, 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 portion, the portion sizing. So we, we say that for the carbohydrates, so number one was vegetables. Vegetables take as plenty as you can. Number two is the biggest problem, but important to us because it is, it is fueling the systems. But we want to keep that at a, a scooped handful. So if you, if you use a scooped handful, if you can see on the left lower, that is a scooped handful. So that will be an equivalent of... Uh, if you use that, you'll be around 200 grams. So 200 on average is still okay. Uh, and, uh, and, and however, however, that has got to be taken into consideration how your activity is, what is your lifestyle, what do you do. I've had patients who do uh, 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 200 and they say, ah, I'm so, nah, I feel weak, I feel... So, so you adjust it a little bit to 300. Mm. Because, because if the carbohydrates, if the carbohydrates are too low, at times, some of them, the concentration may reduce. So you increase it a little bit. Okay. okay. Now, I'm going to discuss uh, everything. Uh, the, the slides are coming, the kettles and things like that. Now, the weight control. Very important for... Essentially, here, you're measuring your weight over your height. And normally it should be between 18.5 to 24.9. So the, 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 the weight over your height, weight should be in kilograms and your height should be in meters. And your target should be within that range. And then there is also an important parameter that can help you know that you're doing well. That is where you do your waist hip circumference. You measure your waist circumference divided by your hip circumference. And for the, for the men, it should be 0 0.9. For the ladies, it should be 0 
So if you are above that, then we are we are we are we are, we are running into trouble. Uh, normally, if 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 your waste is becoming far bigger, then then you know the if if you look at that figure, more or less like the waste and the heap, they are more or less there. So if your waste is way above your heap, then you know that uh, you're not doing well in terms of uh, uh, the, 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 the the glucose uh, and weight management. Issues we are raised about the keto. So here I, I, I put in some keto and keto is important in terms of controlling your weight on one hand, but also control your energy you're putting into the body. And what does, it, what does keto diet, what is the principle that it uses? Remember I gave you a slide that showed that carbohydrates give you energy, but cause a rise in the sugar, in the glucose. The proteins and fat will give you some energy, but they will not cause, they will cause minimal rise in the glucose in the body. So the keto diet rides on to that principle. And mainly you're going to get majority of your energy from proteins and fat. And then you really minimize the carbohydrates. You want to push it as close to zero as possible. But by and large, it is just using the principle that I, I showed you earlier in the plate method, where you are increasing your vegetables and cutting back on the carbohydrates. Now in the keto, they actually even increase the protein and fat even more. And uh, essentially all you're doing there is, uh, is, is getting sources of energy, which will not affect your glucose. So somebody was about the keto diet. Keto diet is very important and it has helped many of my patients. I actually advocate uh, the keto diet and some patients, I start them on this and you actually get a reversal of diabetes. I've had many patients who come in uh, and we are using four medicines to treat diabetes and we actually use keto plus the medicines and uh, the sugars keep dropping and we keep producing the medicines, keep producing the medicines until we are off the medicines and we are only using a, a dietary methods. So keto diet, very important in terms of control and even reversal. However, diabetes does not reverse a hundred percent. It may go into hiding. It may go into what we call like remission. Remission is like somebody is hiding somewhere. So you have to keep your guards up. If you leave your guards down, it may pop back again. So what we can say is that we can go into remission and we actually stop taking any medicines and we just use our exercise and diet. Fasting. So fasting is, is a very, very important aspect. And uh, as you have, uh, as you, you could have realized, it's like we are telling the body, your body, you have missed function because of too much glucose. So let us cut back on the glucose we are giving you. That's why you're giving it excess vegetables. There is no glucose there. That's why you're giving it too much protein. There is minimal glucose there. That's why you're cutting back on the carbohydrates. There's minimal glucose there. Now, in addition, you're adding on fasting. Fasting now, you're running long periods where now you're saying, no, 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 I'm not going to give you any energy. Once you do that to the body, the body goes and utilizes what it has in store and, 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 and uses that. And the fasting can really vary. There are people who, who, who fast, they call it every, every day, 18 stroke eight. There are those who do two days a week. There are those who do alternate day fasting. There are those who do three days a month. But any mode of fasting, any mode of fasting, all it is doing is cutting back on the energy you're giving the body. And it is actually very, very important to the body because it helps the body cut back on the weight. It helps the body to go in the store and use whatever it has stored uh, without you providing more from the outside. Okay, so fasting ensures that the body uses stored food and then uh, the body will resort to fats, break them down. It will help us in weight control and then it improves the action of our insulin. Very important uh, aspects to note. Okay, then exercises. Exercises are, are, is another important factor. So here in terms of exercises, we are saying, fine, we have given you this glucose, let us burn it down. So you can either control what we are putting in 
or force the body to use what it has stored, or we burn down whatever it has, we have put in. So exercises are really burning down what the body has put in. So it is also important to individualize these exercises. Please do not go for running if you have bone pains, you are elderly, or you may have a, a, a heart problem, you may do simple exercises. So the exercises have really, really got to be individualized. You shouldn't tell somebody who is 70 years to go on, on a treadmill and run at, at, at so many uh, you know, speeds. Otherwise, they, they may end up with cardiac issues and they get up with joint issues. These exercises are better done in the morning because as you exercise, the glucose goes down. So you don't want this glucose to go down when you're going to sleep and you sleep and the sugar has gone down. Number three, your target should be at least if you can do 150 minutes per week, which is an average of around 20 to 25 per day. You can do simple walking. You can do people who can play some games like maybe tennis, people who can go swimming. The, the exercises are really many, but as long as you keep them enjoyable and slowly build them to your target. And you can also do 10,000 steps per day as an indicator of how much you exercise. Stress management, I earlier stressed this, this has got to be managed very well. Because if you're stressed, the body releases certain chemicals which cause inflammation and it will affect the functionality of different things, including glucose control. Uh, stress will lead to rising sugar in the body and it will affect uh, the food you take. Most of the time, if you're stressed, you end up eating uh, junk things, you end up drinking sodas. and So stress is one thing that we have got to manage. And this shows us the different ways how we can manage our stress, exercise, family and friend support, uh, such a group. Like this is very important. Many, 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 many other things, okay? Hang out with friends and you want to avoid uh, 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 behaviors that are going to increase your stress. So really stress, Control and management is a, a key aspect uh, in terms of uh, controlling our, our, our sugars. And then the medicines, medicines, of course, they're, they're a little bit technical. Uh, so uh, on this forum, I may not go into the details uh, unless uh, uh, colleagues need me to go into the details. But medicines just help the exercise and the diet. The control of diabetes can be achieved almost to a tune of. 60% without the medicines. So the medicines just come in to support the other two. But we have different wonderful medicines, one that can stimulate uh, in the pancreas. Sorry? Sorry? So, so we have medicines that can stimulate the pancreas to produce insulin. We have medicines that can slow absorption of glucose from the intestines. We have drugs like metformin, which stimulate the tissues to use the insulin better. We have drugs like the prosiga, which are going to force the kidneys to put to excrete your glucose. And of course, we have the insulin itself, which we can give you if the patients are, are not able to, to produce their own insulin. So we have different wonderful drugs that are going to work at different sites to, to reduce the sugar in the body. I'm sure some of you know drugs like glyphenclamide. These are drugs that are going to stimulate the pancreas to produce insulin. Now, somebody asked a question whether you can combine uh, uh, insulin and oral hypoglycemics. There is no problem. These drugs are working at different sites. So I can drive, combine a drug which is acting in the intestines with the other one which is acting in the kidney. I can combine insulin with the one which is working in the tissues. For example, I can combine metformin, which is working in the tissues, together with insulin. I can combine insulin together with a drug called Acabos. Acabos is the one that stimulates the intestines to, to reduce glucose absorption. So there is no problem in me combining the different uh, medicines. And then of course, science has developed where we have the automated systems. Uh, for those who don't have insulin, there's a gadget we can plant onto the body and then it automatically uh, injects uh, insulin into the body. Automatically, you don't have to measure, you may do any measurements. It does its own measurements and its own delivery of the insulin. We have things like the pancreatic transplants. Of course, those are not developed in our country, but elsewhere in the world, they are doing them. And of course, the stem cell technology, where they get the, 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 the morula. Morula is that cell that has not yet differentiated. 
and then they inject it into the pancreas and then it evolves into the pancreas. Uh, there are people out there who have been confusing the public and, uh, and, 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 and probably they want to, to deceive them about different things about stem cell, but stem cell, they use that morula. Morula is almost like a human being, but at the, 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 the initial, initial, initial stage, and they use tissue, not plants. Some people go out there and tell people about plants. Plants is nothing to do with stem cell. Stem cell technology is they use the morula, inject it into the pancreas, and then those cells develop into new pancreatic tissue. We normally use that for type one diabetes where people are not able to produce insulin because they have had issues with the pancreas. Now, before we close, very important to note uh, some features about hypoglycemia. People will come in sweating, you, you feel pale, you get hungry, you get fatigued, you get anxious, the heart is racing, you lose concentration, look out for those features because as we treat high, high sugars, we don't want you to go into low sugar because it is very dangerous, especially if somebody uh, uh, is, uh, is elderly because once the sugar go down, they, they actually cause more havoc. That's why as we control the sugars, we control them slowly. We don't want to be aggressive so that we avoid hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia normally sets in if the sugars go below 50. So we don't want your sugars to go below 50. Some people are held in a situation where they're, they're not sure whether they're in hypo or hyper and they don't have a glucometer to measure. Please always assume you are in hypoglycemia because hypoglycemia will kill and yet hyper will take time to kill you. So if you're not sure, assume hypoglycemia and it can save and it has saved many, many patients. Quickly pushing glucose or soda or something with a quickly pushing something, uh, dissolve some glucose in water and if somebody cannot swallow, squeeze their, their, their cheeks, pour in that glucose as quickly as you can so that you can, you can save their life. So some of them have actually gone into coma and you have to force the glucose into their system. Of course, if they're in hospital, we have other, we can put up IVs and things like that. But if you are home, please push in something that has got lots of sugar quickly into their system. And then as we summarize the tech important, tech home important message is that number one, we have got a problem with insulin. Either the insulin is not being produced or it is not working well, and that leads to us to be into diabetes. Diabetes leads to rising blood sugar in the body, and this causes damage to every body part, every body part, the eyes and all systems. Number four, it is caused by damage to the pancreas or unhealthy lifestyle. Majority of the patients, it is something to do with unhealthy lifestyle. The diet, the exercise, there's a sedentary lifestyle, okay? What are we going to do? We need a healthy life model uh, uh, to control uh, this diabetes. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Idrissa. I'm sure all of you have uh, really, really learned a lot from this exposure. It's been simple and to really our basic lives back home, nothing medical about it, too much, too much medical language is usually very difficult for some of our caregivers to take, but this time it's been very, very well put. Uh, please join maybe, me. Maybe, maybe, maybe Christina, there is, a, yes. there, is a, there is somebody who asked about the herbal medicine. Now, how yes, medicine? doctor, I, I, we are going to go through some uh, clarifications and uh, other questions right now. Okay, perfect. After, yeah. So we give a big clap to him and immediately ask uh, Dr. Philippa to point out those questions which have, have remained a bit hanging and uh, all of you are free to, yes, put up your hands to, to ask directly or make comments as uh, appropriate. Dr. Philip, I think we can start off with you to okay. point out um, some comments, please. Right, I think the first comment we'll start with is the one he was going to address on herbal medicine. 
it was a question, uh, is there herbal medicine other than tablets or insulin that one can use? Um, okay, should I read? okay. So you want me to uh, to respond to, to each of them or you want to read them in a group so I, I can respond? Um... Okay, let me read the rest then. There was also a question about people who had COVID-19 went into ICU and at the time of discharge, they had got diabetes and someone wanted to know whether you have figures on the number of people who are seeking care under this similar circumstances. There was a question on how much fruit one should take and uh, what types are allowed. And also a similar one about whether the fruit is included in the 25% of carbohydrate. Uh, there was a question on uh, the costs of diabetic tests. Um, we also have a question whether wine is lumped with other alcohol. Uh, what about matoke? Where does it fall? How much of it should we take? Uh, a comment on peas seem to increase glucose and where should we place it on that uh, portion of plate method for, for the diet? And um, how many meals a day should a diabetic take? You could take those ones as we check for more that might have come in. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Well, number one, the herbals. Now, herbals, um, no doubt that uh, modern medicine evolves from um, herbal drugs. Most of the medicine, the modern medicines, they are developed initially from a plant. I happen to have visited uh, a, a, a factory in uh, Frankfurt for Max Serono, the guys who manufacture metformin. And they have this whole mega building that has got all different plants that they have studied. So no doubt that there are certain plants that have got a function of reducing sugars in the body. However, the major concern comes in here is that these have got to be controlled and well studied and well regulated. So if somebody just comes up from somewhere in Natete and says, hey, I have this concoction, it can treat your diabetes, then we are bound to run into a, a problem. That's why as a, as, as a department uh, 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 of diabetes in Mulago, together with Makerere, uh, anybody who has a, 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 a herb that they think works, we have encouraged them to come up, they can actually patent it because the worry has always been that maybe my science is going to be stolen away. No, 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 no. no. You can patent it and uh, they, they are, they are patent, patent offices. And then we have this well studied and well regulated. Actually, if it is well studied, this person benefits even more than when they're in hiding. Because if it is well studied, then the whole public will know. Actually, the bigger pharmaceuticals can actually buy it off and produce it uh, on a much bigger scale that would actually benefit the developer far more than if it is kept in the, in, the, in the drawers. So the major issue about the hubs is that the ones we have in Uganda, they are not regulated. Nobody knows who, who does what. Somebody just goes in, the, in their backyard. And, uh, but no doubt some hubs may have hypoglycemic effects. It's all about just the regulation. Number two, uh, COVID-19. COVID-19 did a, a really big havoc uh, to our society and, and in terms of particular diabetes. Uh, many patients who, who who were put on high doses of uh, uh, COVID treatment ended up with diabetes mellitus. And um, the numbers, I've seen so many patients coming, but the good news is that this is, is, is a transient uh, effect. It's a transient effect that occurred occur to the body because of steroid use. And most of the patients, I'm, I'm here to see, majority of the patients that have been sued, they have gone ahead to recover from that diabetes. It is usually transient. But at this point, let me emphasize that whenever somebody prescribes to you steroids, prednisolone, hydrocortisone, dexa, for any reason, please make sure it is taken for a short while and do not use it for long, long term. Because if you use it long term, then the risks of diabetes increase and the risks of uh, diabetes persistence increase. Now, fruits are very important. 
but uh, the fruits will cause a rise in your blood sugar. So my patients, what I tell them is that treat fruits as carbohydrates. So if you decide to eat a fruit, do not take katogo together with mangoes. If you wake up in the morning and you want to take mangoes, weigh your mangoes so they occupy your, your, your portion of carbohydrates. However, there are certain fruits that do not have any effect on my glucose, and they can give me the micronutrients that I want. So the passion juice, the oranges, lemon, apples are not that bad. Watermelon is not that bad. The rest are going to cause a havoc in your sugars. Popo, pineapple, bananas, uh, gonja, uh, plantain. Uh, mangoes, jackfruit, they are going to disturb the sugar. So if you take them, the sugars will skyrocket. So if you if you are going to take any of those, then you treat them as carbohydrates. Cost of testing for diabetes, the cost is as, as low as a single strip costs like uh, 2,000. But of course in a hospital, because of overheads and whatever, it may go to around 5,000. If you're going to do HbA1c, it costs 55,000. If you're going to do HbA1c, it may cost you maybe like uh, 70,000. The HB, uh, rather the OGTT. OGTT is 70, HbA1c is 55, and the unordinary blood sugar, like a fasting, is uh, around 5,000. And then, but of course, if you're going to test the different organs and systems, uh, then the cost goes up. It may be around somewhere around 400, 500,000 if you're testing the different systems. And then somebody asked about uh, wine and alcohol. Uh, wine and the other, the other bits of alcohol, the difference is about the different concentration. No doubt, no doubt, wine has got a benefit that uh, it impacts into the body. However, the, the side effects it produces are far bigger than the benefit you derive. So, WHO guidelines are like uh, alcohol, wines uh, should be kept uh, to zero. Then matoke is under foods. And we say this one, keep it within our 25%, or if you have a weighing scale, keep it within less than 300 grams. And the meals we normally do, morning, lunch, and dinner. Now, in between the meals, you may feel a little bit funny and whatever. You can take a snack. For example, dinners. Dinners will not cause a rise, rise in your sugars. You could eat some over kettle. It won't affect your, your, your blood sugars. You could take, you know, a, 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 those simple things in between. I normally encourage my patients to eat uh, soya. You know, the, 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 the soya, the dinners in between, maybe with a cup of tea without sugar between the meals. But the major meals are three. But we keep the food amounts just like we discussed. Now, peas and any other foods, we normally encourage our diabetics, become your own doctor. If you eat peas and you see a rise in sugar, then say, oh, these peas have got an issue. But one trick is for you to monitor yourself. Know that if I eat this thing, it's good for me. This one, not good for me. So regular checkups are important to study these different foods more. But more importantly to note is that when you take any food with lots of fiber, fiber slows down the absorption of different foods. For example, I could eat peas, umatoke, plain. My sugar may rise to, say, 70. But if I take that umatoke with fiber, and fiber, we said, is majorly from the vegetables, the, the rise will not be as much as, as, as when I take it plain. So the, the important message here, study your body, do regular checks, but also take the different foods with fiber. I think I've answered many of those. Thank you so much, Dr. Mtevi. Uh, Just there, one more there still... one before, more before you, Dr. Philippa, before you, you finalize, uh, there is a hand. Unfortunately, the name is Samsung, but I also want to ask Dr. Mtevi, I've had so many people shunning coming to medical doctors or Western medicine because they claim that you take off, you cut off their legs. Uh, <laughs> could you help our seniors to enlighten 
uh, them about that situation when you cut off their legs that, you know, one leg this time and next time they come, you are cutting off the second leg as a way of treatment. Now, it then is very after important. That, maybe before the, the Samsung person can ask the question also, and you take it at once. No, no, no. Oh, you, the Samsung, you want the Samsung to ask first? Okay. <laughs> There's okay, a my name is uh, uh, my name is Monica Abonwaku. I'm diabetic eh? and I'm on insulin. When I measure my sugars, they are normal, but I have a lot of heat in my body. What is causing my heat, the heat in my body, doctor? Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll start with the, 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 the one for the, the foot. Now, it's quite unfortunate that uh, about the cutting of the foot, but by and large, as doctors, we are, we are designed to preserve as much as we can. Now, we try as all remedies, all remedies to try and preserve the feet. But by the time, if, if your nerves are gone and the blood vessels are gone, that foot will actually start turning black. So if anybody says you to cut off the foot before the blood vessel is gone and the, 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 the nerve is gone, probably, you know, they, they've done it early, but most trained people will evaluate those two. And it's a discussion that is arrived to by both parties, the doctor and the patient, because that foot will start turning black. But more importantly, it is for us to try and avoid reaching that end. Because if you reach amputation stage, then it is too late for us. So let us ensure that we, we, we catch this diabetes early. If we have the diabetes, let us do all the means that we have discussed to try and avoid cutting over our foot. Particularly for the foot, let us avoid uh, putting on very tight shoes. Let us examine those shoes before we put them on. Let us try not to go to the gardens without protecting, uh, putting on protective gear. Then number four, let us periodically go to a doctor to check and see whether we are on target. If you are on target, it is very rare that you get an amputation. Now, that brings me to Monica's question about insulin and the burning. If your sugars are normal, please do not go by a single sugar. A single sugar may tell you that you're normal. For example, some patients only measure the morning sugar. That is okay, but it is, it is not adequate. Please measure. Uh, before breakfast, before lunch, before supper. Occasionally, measure two hours after breakfast, two hours after lunch, two hours after dinner. You may not do all of them at, at one sitting, but measure the different spots. You, on average, you would require like six different readings and ensure that all of them are within the bracket we discuss of sugar between five and eight around there. So if you go by one reading, you may be misguided. But number two, if you get burning in the feet, the nerves are complaining that we are having a problem, we are getting damaged. So look out, the sugar is not yet fully controlled. You may do the fasting and it's showing, if you do only the fasting, it is only telling you what you ate at supper, but you don't know what happens during the day. We need to follow that as well, but also try and do the HbA1c to give us an overall control over the last three months but still also check the cholesterol because it can also affect nerves. Also uh, check out the, 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 the blood pressure, but also important, do regular exercises. Because as you exercise, you burn down the fat and you also improve blood going to the foot. And also get into a habit of putting on those uh, 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 stockings with uh, extra, uh, they're thick. So they sort of create heat within the feet. And once you have heat in the feet, the vessels expand and improve blood flow. But if it persists, uh, please talk to, 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 to your doctor to, to quickly find uh, 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 the cause because it can predispose us to damaging uh, our foot. Thank you very much. All right, there was one more burning question about uh, for you to comment on eating small but frequent portions instead of olumbo when many. What do you have to say about that? Yes, nobody, nobody will encourage our, our, our diabetics. We want them to take in small, frequent meals. I'll give you an example. If I'm going to eat a chapati, 
there's nothing wrong with me eating a chapati. But if I'm going to eat it in the morning, I have to take only, say, 200 grams of the chapati because that's my food. If I'm going to eat a chapati and the katogo, together, the katogo is, is under the category of food, under carbohydrates, and chapati is under carbohydrates. The two should form a total of 200. However, if now, instead of eating this whole chapati in the morning, I say, ah, in the morning, let me just take half. And then after like three hours, I take another half. My sugar will not rise to the level of somebody who takes one whole one at a go. For example, a person who takes a full chapati, the sugars may rise all the way to nine. But for me, if I take half and then take another half after three hours, my sugar may go up to maybe uh, six. And then after some time, it's coming down, 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 down. Then I put in another one. So I'll be kept at a lower belt. So our encouragement to our diabetics is to use small, frequent meals. Keep that carbohydrate below, try as much as possible to keep it below 200, below 300. And, uh, and, 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 and what I call carbohydrates is to treat them many. Anything, what we say food is under carbohydrate. And the rice, the posho, the bread, the chapati, the plantain, uh, the millet, the rice, the yams, all those are under carbohydrates and all of them are under food. Let us keep them to the bare minimum. Let us keep them to around 200 grams. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, at this juncture, I would like to ask Dr. Javida to give us a wrap up and thank the presenter. And before that, uh, Dr. Philippa, could you kindly pass out any announcements for the members, please? Yes, thank you very much, moderator. And thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mtebi, for that wonderful presentation. It's been very insightful. Uh, from the team at Papa School Aging, I'd like to inform all those who have joined us today and to also let the ones who have not been able to join us know that our next session is going to be focused on physical activity. It's going to be a physical session. We shall have it on the 26th of November, our usual last Saturday of the month. Um, it will be at Sanyuka Square, which is in uh, a, vill a village called Nachesanja near Kawanda. Uh, we'll have physical activities, socializing and dancing, and also discussions around aging and how we can be purposeful and intentional and make intentional choices about the things we do so that we can have a good quality of life as we age. So I encourage all of you to join us that day physically. We shall send round the pin to the location uh, on your email for those whose emails we have already. If we don't, you can email us at, on uh, purposefulaging at gmail.com. I'll put that in the chat shortly. Yes, so you're very welcome to join us and we put into practice what Dr. Mutevi has just told us to control diabetes and also what we've seen in previous sessions about um, staying healthy as we age. Thank you very much and back to you moderator. Thank you, Dr. Philippa. Could we, could Dr. Javila please wrap up? Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Christina. And thank you so much, Dr. Mutevi for sparing your precious time to share uh, a lot of this knowledge to everyone. And uh, just as a recap, uh, I think there are like three or four very important points you made. One, I think at the beginning of your slides, the first point was diabetes is a very common disease and none of us, none of us is spared from it. Secondly, I think you did mention that this disease is controllable. So it's not a death sentence. Uh, thirdly, um, uh, this disease, like we know, has been around for ages and ages. Actually, it's described way back, uh, I think, before Christ. And it's going to be with us for forever, especially with the changing times. And right now, something probably that Dr. Mutebi did not mention, there is a big number of children being affected by this disease. And it's previously we thought they were getting what he described as type one, but now it's difficult to get a child in say P7, P6 with diabetes. 
that is type 2. It's so common. We are seeing it quite a lot. So it's a disease that is common and we all have to be careful. Let's take his message very serious of taking time off to check. Uh, I know the economy is a bit hard, but uh, 5,000 shillings to do a quick fasting sugar uh, is something that can actually prevent you from losing a limb uh, many months later. So I want to thank everyone for being very active. I want to thank Dr. Mutebi once again for sparing his precious time uh, to share this knowledge. Uh, Dr. Mutebi's clinic, probably let me do a kalango here. His clinic is uh, called Wellington Diabetic Center. It's located along Buganda Road. I think it's, uh, Dr. Mutebi, you'll correct me. I think it's opposite, uh, it's Hotel Triangle along Buganda Road. That, that's correct. And he's it's on Mukwana Court. Yes. Um, I do refer to Dr. Mutebi because we are colleagues. I do refer uh, quite a number of, of patients with diabetes and other endocrine like thyroid problems to him. Uh, and he will definitely take care. I think I saw someone who wanted your contact, Dr. Mutebi. So I think Mr. Busulwa, please feel free to visit him at his clinic for further advice. Uh, thank you so much, the organizers. Uh, I think we've overshot the time, but uh, we are grateful for this talk. Hopefully, we'll, Dr. Mutebi will come back for another round of uh, diabetic education to, to, to the seniors. Thank you, moderator. Back to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone who has attended. And as uh, Dr. Philippa has indicated in the chat box, our contact is purposefulaging at gmail.com. And to any of uh, our usual telephone numbers, and the meet in end of November is free of charge, but you, okay, someone wants to know how do we become members of this forum. You are already a member by virtue of, be, of being a senior, by virtue of being a caregiver to someone and someone who needs to seek knowledge is most welcome anytime. As you see, these diseases start when we're young. So your age really doesn't matter. You are welcome to purposeful aging. Thank you so much once again, everybody for coming. Please do not mark out that the end of November session, physical session. Thank you so much. Be blessed and have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.